11 Alabama on the road at Texas A&M. And if you would have saw this game probably before the season, the spread would probably be a lot bigger. But now we've seen Texas A&M kind of picking up steam late with Max Johnson now at quarterback, 6'6", 250, I believe. That dude is absolutely massive, 230 for Texas A&M. And the other side of it, Alabama, Jalen Milrow has been eaten too. But 11 Alabama on the road at Texas A&M. Big game for Jimbo Fisher versus Saban. So many storylines, so much to talk about here. But what sticks out to you, Cody, about this matchup? Man, going into this game, if I told you that one of these teams is ranked 104th in the nation with 195 yards passing a game, what team would you say it would be? a and I would too. It's Alabama. 195 wow. yards per game passing. Can Jalen Milrow be more dynamic, not only down the field throwing, but intermediate? I said it in our prediction episode at the very beginning of the year. Can Jalen Milrow be dynamic, accurate, on time, and on target? in the intermediate and short passing game to allow the athletes on the outside not only opportunities to break one-on-one tackles because AM should stack the box against Jace McClellan and those Bama running backs, but also they're going to stack the box to take away the RPO, zone read, quarterback run opportunities for Jalen Milrow. So Jalen Milrow, I think this is going to be on you. Um, I believe this game is in College Station, so it's going to be a dynamic atmosphere. Um, over 100,000 people screaming their heads off. Jalen Milrow, your first big road test as a starting quarterback um, in the SEC. So, um, yeah, is a and for real? I, I already owe mm-hmm. Jimbo Fisher a letter. They're 4-1. and one. I said they're only going to win three games this year. So, um, is a and for real? This is their opportunity um, to kind of shut up all the naysayers like myself. Um, if you think about it, a and wins this game. Really, the only thing that stands between them and Atlanta for the SEC championship is probably going to be that LSU game towards the end of the year. <laughs> Sorry, guys. A little technical difficulty. <laughs> Drop the mic. I love Drop. it. I was, I was going to say before you before you continue to go, Cody. That that point you made about the intermediate route is big for Jalen Milrow because when they were down against Texas, I'm looking at it right now. He's 14 and 27. They needed a throw to get back when they were down 11 points, down four points, and those intermediate throws, those digs, those slant routes, he continued to miss against that Texas defense. And that's what ultimately cost him that loss. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as we know, Texas A&M, they're going to load the box and also they're going to score the football. Max Johnson transferred from LSU transfer portal. Shout out Dabo Swinney. Mm. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Sorry, Clemson. That's my, that's my one Clemson shot for the, for the, for the broadcast. Uh, No, but Max Johnson, like you said, dynamic six foot six, 300, 230 pounds, big arm can push the ball down the field. Evan Stewart, Moose Muhammad the third, some dynamic receivers on the outside for Texas a and I think Moose Muhammad might be injured, or was it Evan Stewart? One of the two might be injured, so they're kind of coming back. I don't know if they're back this week or not. Um, I just know that they do have dynamic athletes on the outside. Um, Texas a and this is a great opportunity for you guys to take a huge step towards validating all that recruiting that you guys have done, all those NIL deals, all the stadium upgrades, and maybe do something that even Johnny Football wasn't able to do back in his time at uh, a and and that is a uh, qualify for the SEC championship. It was Evan Stewart. They're trying to get him back this week against Alabama. That'll be a yep. big, again, another wide receiver on the outside. Can he take advantage of this Alabama secondary? That's been looking better with Kool-Aid. What a name. Kool-Aid McKinstry. McKinstry yeah. And then Caleb Downs, a guy you said before the season, but I'm going to throw back to you here, Cody, because when Connor Wagman went down, a lot of a and fans panicked. They didn't, they didn't think that this offense could pick up, even maybe be better with Max Johnson. What's impressed you about him in that transition between Weigman going down and Johnson, who's been playing well these past couple games? Yeah, I mean, I said it in a couple episodes. uh, Max Johnson actually was the one who was in the quarterback battle with Joe Burrow. And so Mm -hmm. he's been around for a long time, not only at LSU, but now at Texas A&M. So you have an experienced transfer quarterback under center. Um, So he's seen a lot of big-time college football. He's played against good defenses. Think about an LSU defense back in 2019 that he was probably having to be the scout team quarterback against every single week. That's going to prepare you for big-time moments like this. So ultimately, at first when I saw Connor Wagner went down, I said, there you go. I told you guys they're only going to win three. And now Max Johnson said, wait a minute. So it's just (laughs) good to see um, a guy kind of with a second lease at life, similar to Joe Burrow from Ohio State. Now – uh, Max Johnson able to do the same there at AM. So good to see. Happy free Max Johnson. Um, hopefully you have a good game this weekend. 
And then for Alabama, a big test on the road. Jalen Milrow has been balling recently. I mean, obviously last week, not a lot of throwing yards. Like you mentioned, 195 yards per game. But he's using his legs effectively. Two rushing touchdowns against Mississippi State last week. Now him knowing that he's the quarterback, I think totally changes the mindset of him in this offense. I think Nick Saban's like, hey, you're, you're, you're a run first guy. We're going to take advantage of it. We, we don't like it, but we're going to take advantage of it. Or you're a deep throw guy. We're going to play Jermaine Burton. But I think a guy here to look out for is Jace McClellan. This is the type of game, like, he reminds me of a lot of uh, Jameer <clears throat> Gibbs last year. Um, use him effectively, not only in the backfield, but out in the passing game as well. But a thing that concerns me for Alabama, Jalen Milrow. Yes, he's prone for throwing interceptions. But Texas A&M Cody, in the last three weeks, has forced six fumbles. Jalen Milrow really loose with the football when he carries it. That's my biggest worry for him when it comes to him running the football a lot is this this Texas A&M defense is known for punching the football out. If a fumble or two happens for Alabama and they, they, they've got a big deficit to go behind, it's going to be tough for them to come back, especially a loud atmosphere in Kyle Field. Um, that's just something that sticks out for me. But another key player for me, I think it's got to be Jermaine Burton. You're the wide receiver. You're the top guy. Transferred from Georgia. We've seen some flashes of him. He's got to have a couple of explosive plays, especially with Jalen Milrow, who's known for that deep ball. I think they've got to hit on at least one or two um, in moments where it's either a long third down or a long second down. They need a deep shot down the field. But what sticks out to you either about what, what I just said there, Cody, or what's some key matchups to watch for this game? Yeah, you know, I think it boils down to Max Johnson. Is Max Johnson has a good game? and Because I think Alabama is going to try and force him to throw the football. And if they're able to get Max Johnson in a rhythm, and score early and often, get Alabama down 10, 14 points, and force Jalen Milrow to have to throw the football. As we just said, Jalen Milrow, you haven't been very accurate, intermediate, and short passing game. That's how you get back into a rhythm and get back into football games. So, frankly, similar to Oklahoma and Texas, I think ultimately Alabama and, or yeah, Alabama and Texas A&M, Bama clearly the more talented team. But they're deficient at the quarterback position. So can a and take advantage of that, get up a couple scores, and force Alabama to do something that they don't want to do, which is throw the football down the field and be dynamic in that passing game? I know this isn't a big rivalry, but I always love seeing A&M and Alabama, both teams that are you know either really good records or highly ranked. It's always a good matchup. You always see some kind of chaos or craziness out of this game. But, Cody, for me, when it's all said and done, I got Alabama winning this game 28-20. to 20. I think it's close, but at the end of the day, I think Milrow steps up. This is the kind of game that defines him as a quarterback and defines Alabama as one of those CFP contenders, even an SEC contender. So I think it's a big game for Alabama. I like them winning 28-20. to 20. What do you have in this one? Love the pick. Love the pick. I love what Max Johnson is doing right now at AM. I don't know if Jalen Milrow is ready for the 104,000 um, that are going to be bearing down on him at College Station. Give me Texas A&M, 28-27, over Alabama. They go to 3-0 and in the SEC West. And I'll even tell you how it happens. Jalen Milrow drives them down. They get in field goal position, 40-yard field goal for the win. Misses. Alabama loses 28-27. See, I like that you're sticking to your point that you think Alabama's going to lose three games this season. I know you didn't say Ole Miss, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know I'm... it was on their way. They were on their way to lose that game. Damn it! Hey, if they win this game and you picked them right, maybe you don't have to send the letter to Jimbo. You know, maybe it's like, hey, yeah, I, I thought you were going to win three 